What's going on everybody? So I'm back in the video. Hope everyone's having a great day. So with the release of iOS 15, I'm going to be showing you guys some battery saving tips because there's going to be a ton of people updating to the public version today. If you're looking to update to iOS 15, I do have a video tutorial on that, which I'm going to link down below in the description or you guys can go, you guys can just go find it on my channel. With that being said, I'm going to be showing you guys that my device is currently on iOS 15 right here. So we can go to the settings in general about and we are on 15.0. So now that I show you guys that I'm coming on iOS 15, the first thing you guys want to do is utilize the uh, low power mode. So a lot of people know about this feature under the battery tab, low power mode. It's going to automatically give you that notification when your device is at 20% or lower, but you want to try having this um, on basically whenever you can, because you guys can see right here, it says it temporarily reduces battery activity like downloads and mail fetch until you fully charge your phone. So. Um, I know it's kind of annoying to have it on sometimes because um, it will automatically turn off your device um, like after like 20 seconds or so, but it is a very good feature that Apple has implemented, implemented into their software, allowing us to save some battery life. So basically it allows the iPhone to learn your daily kind of routine on how you charge your device. And it says right here at the bottom, so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you need to use it. So um, make sure you guys have this toggle on because um, you guys can see currently my maximum capacity is at 89%, which isn't too bad. So if you're trying to sell your iPhone or resell it later on, this will basically determine the resale value of your iPhone because the lower it is, the lower the value will be at. So as if it's closer to up like 95 to 100%, you'll be able to sell it at a very high value compared to what I have it currently at right now, which isn't too bad. I've had this phone for almost two years now, so it is a little bit down than it, when I first purchased it, obviously. But um, just note that you guys will want to have the optimized battery charging toggled on. Next thing I want to talk about is the 80% rule. A lot of people... I wouldn't say this is fully confirmed, but this is what how I usually view it as. So when your device or your percentage of your battery is at 80% or higher, just avoid charging it right away. So for example, if you're about to go to bed and you usually charge your phone before you sleep and your phone's at about 85%, don't charge it all the way overnight for like up to like eight hours while you only need to charge an extra 15%. Maybe in the morning when you wake up and you decide that you need that extra 15%, Maybe while you're showering, making some food, go plug in your phone, but don't leave it the entire night when it's especially at a high percentage such as 85%. That's why a lot of people call this the 80% rule. So um, it's up to you guys if you guys want to utilize this kind of rule. Next tip we have for you guys is the battery bug drain. So what you want to do is head back into the battery section right here under the settings tab and scroll down and see the battery usage by each application. So for me currently, um, it is the FaceTime and I am always on FaceTime, whether that may be with my friends, my girlfriend, and it does use a lot of battery usage. So um, I do believe that's why my battery, uh, my battery uh, capacity right now is currently at 89% because I am always on FaceTime probably a couple hours every single day. So now what we're gonna be doing is going into more settings right here under the settings application that we can toggle off. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is going to the privacy section right here and then going to location services. So from here, I don't recommend turning off the location services like just completely off. Um, but what I recommend you guys doing is going through each app right here. So um, if you have a lot of apps that always use your location no matter what, so even if you're not even in the application or using it at all, it's just gonna be using your a location in the background I would recommend turning that off or you or maybe switching it to while using because you guys will notice that a lot of my apps here are either never or while using so for example like crunch fitness app right here I really don't even need to be using my location at all I can literally just set this to never but if you were to have it set to always for all these applications and especially some of these useless ones which don't really need your location then it's kind of pointless and it's going to be using a lot of battery life on your device so you may want to uh, switch some of these to either never or while using but if you have a lot of these set to always recommend changing them immediately. So if we scroll down here at the bottom, we're gonna see something called a system services. We can go into that now. And by default, you should have a lot of these just toggled on, but a lot of these settings, you can just toggle off immediately. The only ones I recommend keeping on is the emergency calls and SOS, the find my iPhone and the share my location if you have that, if, or if you're currently using that feature. So might as well turn all these other ones off, which the, they are kind of pointless, like HomeKit. I don't even use HomeKit at all, so I can turn that off everything else off. I use the share my location. And then if we scroll down here, there's the product improvement page. Don't really use need any of that on. So I'm gonna toggle those off. So you may think that these don't use any of your battery uh, health or life at all, but it 
does add up if you have a lot of these settings just toggled on. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is closing apps from your app switcher. So um, in my opinion, when I have a lot of apps open up on my device, I do feel that my device starts to get a little bit laggy. So when I'm like trying to open up application, it kind of stutters a bit. It also may be in other factors, but um, I do tend to remove all my apps. So if I have a bunch of like apps open, like 20, 30 apps, I'll just open up my app switcher, just swipe on all of them. So you guys will see that it just... I like to have all my apps in my app switcher clean, so I tend to just swipe them all up um, whenever I can, but that is your choice. So now we're gonna be heading back into the settings application again, and now we're gonna be heading into the notification section. And from here, what you wanna do is basically toggle off whatever apps you don't use notifications for or don't need. So for example, like, Best Buy, like I would not need to have my notifications on for that, because um, I do know a lot of people like to enable notifications. Um, other examples are like some games and stuff like I don't really need notifications on for like brain out or bubble witch so I just turn those off so now we're gonna head back into the settings application and now head into the general tab right here and then go into the background app refresh and this is a setting I always turn off on all my devices it's kind of up to you if you want this toggled on so for example you guys can see right here you have the option to use Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi ancillary data so it basically just refreshes the content in the background when you're not using it and this is usually on by default so for example if you want to have this feature on for some applications I recommend only switching to Wi-Fi, not Wi-Fi and sell your data because if you're using your data and you're not in a really um, good area where you have a lot of service coverage, it's going to use your device battery life a lot more. So I recommend just switching to only Wi-Fi if you do want to use this feature for some applications um, and toggle off obviously the ones you don't use. But for me, I don't want to have my apps in the background just refreshing constantly using my battery life. So I tend to just have this entire feature toggled off. So that is the background app refresh. Now we want to head into the accessibility tabs right here. And then from here, we're going to go into the motion tab and we want to turn on the reduce motion. So basically this is going to get rid of a lot, like a lot of the transition when you're kind of going to your home screen, swiping through page, you're going to see it's a lot more blur effect um than what it was before so um this will preserve some uh, battery life for you guys now we're gonna head back and go into the display and text size right here so now what we're gonna be doing is looking at this reduced white point feature under the display and text size so when you're at night in bed just looking at your phone sometimes the intensity of the bright colors kind of affect your eyes a bit so what i recommend you guys doing is just toggling this on and you guys can already see that like on camera right now my screen kind of dimmed a bit I like to set this about like 50% or so, um, but right now I'm recording right now, so I'm just going to toggle this off. But when I'm not recording, just using my phone on a daily basis, I recommend turning this on. And then right here, um, you guys can see I have the auto brightness uh, turned on as well. So it says turning off auto brightness may affect battery life and long term display performance. So I keep that on as well. Next thing I want to talk about is widgets. So if you have a ton of widgets that you don't use on your device, I recommend removing them immediately because it will help save battery life. So I remove a lot of the stock ones that do come with the stock iOS right here. So just go ahead, remove the ones you don't use, but I only have the weather one and then my battery uh, apps or Apple products are here with my Apple Watch and then my iPhone battery. Uh, percentage. Now we're going to go back into the settings application, head into the privacy section again, scroll all the way down to see analytics improvements. And then from here, we're just share iPhone and watch analytics. I don't really need them to send any of my information. Um, obviously, it does help them a bit, but I don't want that because I don't want to save as much battery life as I can. So I'm going to toggle that off. And it says right here, this will also turn off the data collection on your Apple Watch. I'm okay with that. Press OK. And then the last feature I want to be talking about that will use a lot of battery life is the mail application. So by default, if we go into settings, scroll down into mail, and then go into accounts. And then you guys can see the fetch new data option. This is usually toggled on the push icon right here, the push tab right there. So basically, that push basically is going to enable the mail application to refresh your application at all times. So it's always going to try to finding new emails that are just being sent to your account. So this uses a lot of battery life. So I recommend turning this off and then setting right here the fetch to every 15 minutes. It's your choice if you want that. By default, it's set to automatically. But like I said, we don't want our mail app to be refreshing every 
uh, second, just automatically looking for a new email to be sent to our account. I want to just go into the mail application on my own manually and then refresh it myself instead of just having it in the background. So I recommend turning off the push feature. That's very important. That's basically it for this video. Hope you guys did enjoy this one. So iOS 15 just came out today, the public version. Uh, let me know down below. Are you guys going to be upgrading to iOS 15 or are you guys going to be staying back on iOS 14? Whether that maybe you just love the uh, stock iOS. Uh, version of iOS 14 just more stable or if you're on the jailbreak for iOS 14 as well Let me know down below in the comments section if you guys did enjoy this video Drop a like on it hit that subscribe button and that post notification bell so you guys don't miss a video That's basically it and I'll see you guys in the next one